Now this is the right movie to kickstart your new year. What's going on guys and welcome to my review of The Beekeeper, the latest in the Jason Statham butt kickery. Thank you so much guys for clicking here, I really do appreciate it. So the film essentially follows this guy who pretty much keeps to himself. He takes care of bees in this out of the way little area next to this house and after something terrible happens to his friend, he finds out the truth. And not only is he an actual beekeeper, he takes care of actual bees and honey and all that, he's a part of this secret government organization he's pretty much retired but it's actually called a beekeeper it's a part of the branch that if something is out of balance he sets it right and it goes far and beyond out of the reach of the government so that's basically what this is it's a revenge type story and from the moment I heard what it was about I knew this was going to be up my alley I mean there's no question about it anybody who knows me I mean come on so, what is there to say about this? It's dumb fun. It's pretty much what you expect from a Jason Statham film. Now, what I mean about dumb fun is it's basically a product of your basic old school 80s and 90s action flicks. I mean, who among us who grew up in the 80s were not privy to that? We know dumb fun action films. I mean, it was pretty much plagued in that area. You're a disease, and I'm the cure. Which I'm not complaining. I have plenty of them. You know, I have I watch plenty of them. It's just one of those that you just have fun with. They're goofy, wacky, crazy, one-liner. You know, people getting dragged off of buildings and stuff, and you just like cheesy one-liners. That's what this is. It's a true throwback to your '80s and '90s action film era. Expendables tried it with great success with the first two, but then unfortunately it went way off the rails and failed miserably. I think with the beekeeper, I'm hoping that this genre can be saved. Please, let this be its savior. <laughs> this just brings it all back with a bang. So starting off with the positives, this is Statham at his best. I've watched this guy ever since his transporter days in the early 2000s. And he's just evolved so much. This guy is an action legend, and he's pretty much born to be one. He basically is this kind of recluse, and he just basically keeps to himself until something horrible happens to his friend. And he finds out the truth about it, and it pretty much activates him. Like I said, this guy was part of this, this secret government branch, kind of like what you would hear about the Illuminati called the beekeeper and once he finds out what happens to his friend he pretty much gets activated and becomes personal for him and becomes this whole entire revenge story which really intrigues me it really intrigues me every time when a movie is made and it has a revenge plot that to me is entertaining and that's why i knew from the get-go that this would be a movie for me but in the film he's highly skilled you do not want to mess with this person that's 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 fact, <laughs> and just a big fat period right after that. <laughs> Almost Terminator-like. I got sort of like a Terminator vibe from this guy. I mean, even in bad movies, Statham always brings his best. He always makes it rain, he always makes it shine, it, it just any other way you want to put it. He brings the noise, pretty much. And then the beekeeper, he pretty much whooped ass and took names. I can't say that any other way. It's true. <laughs> like I said, even in bad movies, he's always awesome. It's, it's always a joy watching him on screen, you know, doing what he does best. And then the beekeeper, like I said, he brought the noise. I mean, the action was nonstop. There wasn't a moment in this film to where I felt like it could have gone in a different way. I thought it was done perfectly. I thought it was paced very well. I thought it was choreographed very well. There wasn't any moments in it where it's quick cuts or anything. You could actually see everything that was going on. You wouldn't try to struggle or anything because all the shots, it was, it was shot just very well. It was well paced. It didn't feel rushed. I was with it the whole time. Every scene that popped up with him knocking somebody out, I almost wanted to jump out of my seat and just clap <laughs> and this is no watered down cc fied soft pg-13 film this pretty much reminds you the whole entire runtime that this is a hard r hardcore 100 percent 
R-rated action flick. You get blood, you get gore, people having their fingers chopped off, and exploding heads and everything. This does not play around. If you're a fan of just pure hard R action type stuff, this is for you. It does not hold nothing back. And it's just something that we don't get that much, like, anymore. And the attempts that they do try, with the exception of this, it fails. Because we only associate action with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, with comic book movies, which, to be honest, that's kind of getting watered down as well. We're getting at that age, we're getting at that, you know, stage. It's just nice having an old school, everyday, just regular guy going out and just doing what he got to do. Doing what he has to do. And you just don't get that much. You don't get that anymore. Except for comic book movies. And it's it's just nice getting that once in a while. In terms of action, that is, within the action genre. But once the story started, so did the action. And so did my heart. It just kept on. Boom, 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 boom. It just got me hooked the whole time. And it did its job well. Kudos for the filmmakers. And speaking of the filmmaker, director David Ayer... I thought he did a really good job for, in this film. He, he's sort of one of those hit and miss directors. I've only seen, what was it, four? Which was 2014 Sabotage and Fury, and 2016 Suicide Squad, and now this. He's sort of a hit and miss. Sabotage and Fury was okay. Suicide Squad was good enough. Uh, there's a bunch of controversy surrounding that, which I won't get into. But he's just, he's not one of those directors that... I can honestly say is my in my top 10 directors of all time. But with The Beekeeper, I think this is actually his first movie he's done that I've actually really started to praise him. Like I said, I, he's one of those directors that I just... He's hit and miss. That's all I can say. But with The Beekeeper, if he keeps up with the, with the type of stories and action that he did in this and his future projects, hopefully Beekeeper too. <laughs> then I can tell you it very well changed my tune very fast to the positive side, that's for sure. I just like the style he brought in the film. I just like the all-out style and just the direction that he chose. It was it was really cool, and I, I really enjoyed seeing the all-out work that he put into this film, and I really did appreciate it. You got Josh Hutchinson, who we've just seen in Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, the whole time I was watching this film, I was like, oh, that guy seems familiar. Oh, yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, okay, cool. He played the main villain in The Beekeeper, and I thought he was he did a really good job. He was one of those villains that, you know, he, he's sort of on the sideline, but he's basically the, the proprietary of this corporation that Statham's character is going after, and I thought he did a really good job. Mind you, and this isn't really a spoiler, you don't get much between him and Statham only except for one scene, and that was just a phone call, but it, he did a really good job as the main villain, and I gotta praise him for that. Now, on to my mix, there's this whole side plot where this female FBI agent was chasing after Statham's character while at the same time going after this evil corporation. The whole FBI side plot... Now, I will say this. The positive side, what did work for me was the main lead, the main female lead for the FBI agency. I like the connection that they gave her. I like the connection that they gave her towards one of the characters, which I, I won't spoil it for you. I don't know if it'll be a spoiler if I say anything, but I won't anyway, just to be safe. But I did like the whole direction that they took with her character to where she, she had a personal connection to what was happening for the tone of the story. I did enjoy that. And plus she did have some laughable moments. There were some, some scenes in there where she said a few lines which made me chuckle, which kind of goes back to those cheesy one-liners a little bit. <laughs> like the throwback to the 80s and 90s action classics. The negative side to this was every time that she showed up, every time the FBI thing showed up, it would sort of slow the movie down for me a little bit. Every time that would happen, I was like, oh, just get back to Statham. Let me, let me see more Statham. Just come on. <laughs> Not enough for me to get sucked out of the film completely, but it, it was kind of grueling. It did kind of slow the movie down a little bit for me. Now, I know why they added a lot of the... Because there was, there was a, a fair amount of those scenes. It's because Statham was actually a production of Expendables 4 at the same time he was doing this. That has to be the reason. 
so they had to work around it somehow. But for the beekeeper, I felt like those scenes kind of slowed it down just a little bit, which is why I'm being a little lenient toward it and put it in the mix instead of the negatives. But other than that, I thought the film was awesome. I have no gripes against this. I loved it for what it was, a dumb, goofy, throwback action flick. I went to this thing with my family, and my mom, right after the movie ended, right when we got into the lobby, she said to me, now I want Beekeeper 2, this was awesome, and that's saying a lot, especially coming from her. That's how awesome this film was. That's how good of a job it did. It's fun, exciting, it deserves your support, and it deserves to be on a pedestal. So The Beekeeper, what was your thoughts on it? Have you seen it yet? Were you somebody that enjoyed this? Were you as hooked and blown away from this as I was? Or was this not for you? Was this just too much out there for you? Let me a comment down below and give me your thoughts. Thank you so much guys for watching this. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. Make sure to click that bell icon so you don't miss a thing. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.